Right. So this is um, a project I started working on um, mostly because I was interested in how to hook up to a kitchen scale. So maybe some of you may remember there was a talk a few years ago involving a kitchen scale. Oh, that's really cool. So we had a bit of an issue at home. Um, we had a fat cat. So this is Torichi. He's one of our three cats. Um, and he was getting a little bit round. So my wife started calling him Marchan, which is uh, round in Japanese. So our vet wasn't very happy. He was about a kilogram too heavy. So this is after he's lost some weight. So he was <laughs> it's quite round to say the least. Uh, so we started calculating his calorie intake by a scale. So every morning, you know, I get up and I uh, portion out the cat's food into um, takeaway containers with their name written on it. And uh, throughout the day, I just take it from their container if they want some food and give it to them, trying to give them too much. There's no, not much left over for, the other, for this uh, tortoise to, to, um, to eat too much from. So now they've all lost a little weight. I thought, well, actually, that sounds, that seems like a great idea for me too. I wouldn't mind doing that because I'm not, uh, I don't really like these sort of specialized type um, diets. And I thought, well, if it just, all I'm really doing is just eating less meat, but that's the best way to do it. So you can find these sites on the net where you just sort of type in your age and your height and your weight. Um, all this stuff is, is theoretical written down there, may, not, may or may not re re result or um, be my actual height and weight, but somewhere around there uh, and how much you exercise. And if you do a calculation, they'll tell you if you want to maintain your weight, you need uh, this 2,600 calories approximately. If you want to lose a little bit of weight, sort of a quarter of a kilogram per week, you got to drop around 200, what's it, 250 kilogram or 240, or sorry, 50 uh, calories and so on and so forth. So you see if you want to lose a lot of weight, you got to drop off a thousand calories per day. So based on that, um, I thought, well, let's just look at how many, what calories are in what foods. And you can go on the government website here and it tells you all about, here's a list of all the foods, like thousands of items. And you can calculate for anything that you're eating per 100 grams, uh, how many calories that is. And you can just do a simple calculation. You know, I'm supposed to be eating 2,000 calories, so I can lose uh, half a kilogram a week, whatever it is. And you calculate how much you've actually eaten. And then you can um, figure out, well, can I have that, uh, have that beer? Or can I have that bit of ice cream or whatever? Uh, and you can sort of get an understanding of how much, how you're going to be doing on your weight loss uh, plan. And all that's well and good, but obviously it's a lot of work and it's kind of all manual and uh, a bit of a pain. So I thought, well, let's just automate. I thought back to that kitchen scale project that was done a few years ago. And I looked up on the net and it says, essentially you can hook up one to a pie quite easily. And the way it works is you've got these um, strain gauges. So you can see this part in the middle here. That's the part that bends. And as you put a weight on top of it, the middle part here bends, and then it measures the amount of strain, uh, the, the amount of force in, the, in this part here, the cantilever. And that changes the resistance. So a strain gauge is essentially a, um, a resistor that changes with the amount of force that's put into the strain gauge. So we have four of them here, and you put them into a Wheatstone bridge, which I, I only sort of understand. That was one of the things I planned to do before next month was, was sort of go into the details, understand a bit better. Uh, so you have four inputs coming in from this, this chip that you buy off. It's called an HX711. It's essentially a 24-bit uh, analog digital converter. And you just, hook it up, you download one of the libraries or you write your own, and it just helps you figure out what is the actual weight on the scale uh, by reading the four different string gauges. So this is what my scale looks like that I bought. And I hooked up a Raspberry Pi Zero that I had lying around, which unfortunately had some burnt out pins. I did something stupid, uh, burnt out a few pins. So I had to figure out which pins are actually still healthy. And if you take this picture scale apart, you can see you've got the four strain gauges here. One, two, three, four. 
And there's they run the, these wires run here to uh, what I'm thinking here is just an HX711 plus something else um, that acts, acts as a CPU. So I could just um, you, you connect all these all these these strain gauges together, load cells together like that. And there, this board is scaled because it's a, a built instrument. It's already got all this co these connections, these four connections here. So all I really had to do was take the other two connections. So you you go you connect one wire to the E plus in one corner, and then one E minus to the other corner. So so for example, this one, this one, this is my E plus, and this is my E minus, and then this would be the A plus and the A minus. So you just do a diagonal, uh, and then you feed it into HX711, and you have a 3.3 volt ground uh, data and a clock going into your Pi. So when I first started out, I just had this Pi zero, um, but then I realized I want a screen because you want to be able to have some input. Uh, and this is just sort of a, a special purpose LCD screen, so you can't really use that. And then I re remembered that I had a, a 3B that was in a um, Pi touch uh, screen. So this is the Pi touch screen here in this, this case here. Uh, there's the scale and I've got a connected um, Pi keyboard and a mouse to the, the Pi here. So I can just show that. Just give me a sec. Give me a second here. I'm sorry, can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, this one. Okay, so hope you can see that. So you should be able to see uh, the scale here. Yep, we can see it. Yeah, so you can see the scale there. And if I, and you can, so here's the, um, this is the VNC here. So if I zero out the scale, there's nothing on it right now. Um, unfortunately, you can't, you probably can't see the screen uh, with the camera because it's, it's just, just whited out. Uh, so then you put the banana on like that. And you can see it's 162 grams. And then you click uh, calculate that over here. And you can see here it's 51 calories per 100 grams. So a simple calculation is 82, kilo, uh, 82 calories. So then if you uh, eat that banana, you just press add down here. And that adds it to your list of, of things that you've consumed. Does it adjust for the weight of the peel, for instance? Yeah, so this one does. This oh, one, so this is this is a banana raw, flesh only, weighed with skin. I think it says here. Ah, yeah, okay. Skin, yeah. That's good. So, oh. Yeah, so it, it's all approximate, obviously. So tonight I had sea bass, for example, but I didn't get around to around to weighing it. Um, so here's a record of everything that I've eaten in the last couple of days. Um, obviously it needs a bit of work. So it's, it's, I've got it, um, um, sorted incorrectly. So I really should sort it the other way around. And there's a few other things I want to do, like improvements and things like that. Uh, so one of the things that I found, so I, was, I, was, I got the basic functionality working and then I realized, well, it's a real pain. So if I look at all the food, you know, it's just pages and pages and pages of stuff from the website. You know, so all this this stuff, uh, you know, bread sauce. I don't know what that is, and you know that like loads and loads of different types of breads and things like that. So I have a, a favorite column here, and if you can mark something as a favorite, like shredded wheat, I'm a big shredded wheat uh, fan. So I just press favorite, and then that will mark it as one of my favorites. So I go back to favorite. It should show up here, uh, and it doesn't. Anyways, that's that's the idea. Yeah, there it is. Um, so then you can add that 
and you can also subtract it, obviously. If it's not actually your favorite, you can remove it. So that's the idea, is essentially anything that you go to eat, you just put your plate on, um, you zero it out. So if that's my plate instead, you know, so you, you zero it out. Put your plate on, um, you zero it out again, and then you can put your food on top of the plate. Say it's past as last night we had uh, spaghetti bolognese. So you add the spaghetti and then you weigh it and you just click on what it actually is and you click over here and then it calculates the calories and so forth. So I think it's fairly straightforward. Uh, but you can imagine things that, so if there's something that's not on the list, I want to add like a little dialogue box, a little um, thing where you can enter like how many calories per, per, um, per 100 grams. So if you look on the package, you can get that information. So allow that and sort of allow you to add in some more um, some more things that you regularly eat that aren't in the, the database that I have, you know, things like that. <clears throat> so that's that's the intent. That's the basic idea. I go back to my other screen. Yeah, so that's the, de the demo. Um, it's a simple um, Kinter application. It's really only... It's quite a bit of code, but a lot of that stuff is as people that know about. Um, oops, sorry, let's go back. So it's a simple Kinter application. It's people that know about uh, GUI application, right? You have a lot of code. There's just sort of defying the size of things and where they sit in the grids and all that sort of stuff. So it's a fair amount of code, but it's not actually very complicated. Um, and in the back end, I've got a SQLite 3 uh, database that comes with Python, um, and that just contains all the information. So I get that from the uh, read, read the data in. Um, if, I, if you mark as a favorite, that goes back into the, the main database to mark it as a favorite. And then if you move it over to here, um, it does the calculations. If I press add, then it writes everything that was in the uh, in this box, there's a list of food that you're preparing to eat um, to a database and then writes the total calories uh, down here as well and adds that to the database as well. So then I've captured all the data that I'll probably need, uh, but I don't have the functionality yet to make use of all that. Um, so what's left in this little project? So I want to mount it a little bit better. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but it was sitting on a Little bit of perspex and i just want to maybe uh you know buy like a little tray for carrying food or something like that and mount it on that or integrate the kitchen somehow i don't know uh, i want to track calories throughout the day and compare it against what i should be consuming uh depending on my, my current weight um some graphing you know it'd be good to see be good to see that um uh, how well you're doing uh, over a week or a month or whatever uh, adding ad hoc menu items so, you know, decide to have some ice cream or something like that, then just adding that in, you know, you could put in the, um, uh, just look, read the label off the beer you're drinking and put that in there. Uh, multiple users, my wife is sort of interested, um, but she doesn't have my weight problem, so <laughs> not sure if she'll use it, but it'd be good to be able to have multiple users. Uh, could easily uh, integrate uh, bathroom scale as well. So you could have the bathroom scale uh, connected to a uh, Pi 0W, for example, and communicating with this Pi, just so you can uh, keep track of your weight on there, uh, track your exercise. There's uh, various exercise tracking um, apps. I don't know how, we'd, how I would um, connect into those, but it might be possible there. Uh, add in some recipes. So if you're making something, um, you do a lot of recipes that are uh, weight-based. So if you're baking bread or something like that, then you want to use weights instead of you know, cups of flour, uh, maybe a thermocouple so you can measure the temperature of things, you know, make it more of a, a, a kitchen assistant type thing. But like I said, this is the stuff I'm probably going to do. And this is the stuff I might do. Who knows? I found with my, my home working, um, yeah, I think I need it. Scale. So as I mentioned, the, the, the talk a few years ago was about uh, urine flow. So this was in relation to uh, prostate cancer. So if you have prostate cancer, uh, your urine flow drops dramatically. So anyone that has um, low urine flow that are, is male, obviously, 
um, then it is a symptom of, of, um, of, of cancer. So you need to get that checked out, get a, get a blood test, prostate cancer. Um, you know, if you have, or if you're, you're, you know, constantly having trouble entering your bladder, that sort of thing, uh, pet, pet weight monitoring. So I was trying to figure out, well, how can I get my, weigh my cats regularly? So you can, some of the cats are even more easily held than others. So if you put them on, you, if you hold them on a bathroom scale, you can sort of weigh them that way, but it's not very accurate. And they, some of them tend to squirm around a bit. So I was thinking, well, if I just put, um, put a scale somewhere, they won't even, or they'll just use it naturally, you know, as they leave through the cat door or something like that, I could just um, do some pet weight surveillance. <laughs> Uh, and then you can also use it for pet identification. So the three cats all have different weights. So maybe I could use that for pet identification, just for which cat is is currently eating the food or how much food they've eaten, that sort of thing. Um, so just to wrap up, so this is just the devices I bought. So this is uh, what I bought from Amazon. So I was just trying to get the HX711, and then I realized they often come with packs of load cells. So these four load cells that can uh, weigh up, or sorry, um, measure up to 50 kilograms. Uh, so that's nine pounds for that, uh, which is HX711. And this is the scale I bought now is another nine pounds. I paid less than that. That's the sort of, sort of level that you're looking at. So it's you know, 18 pounds for that, plus a spare pie lying around. And you can have a bit of fun. Uh, so the pie bits, so it's a Pi 3B that I was using. It's got the touch screen and the um, case I'm using is the Smart Pi Touch. Um, I think it's the original touch, it's not the Pro. So this one's obviously built for the four with the fan and everything. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's the, the one I was using. And it's a quite good case because you can, um, you've got various options for attaching it to things. Uh, you can you know, screw it into a wall or stuff like that. It's got a swivel on. It's all. It's quite a nice, nice little case for thirty pounds. Always, you can three D print your own, but that's it's up. It's a if you have a three D printer. Uh, and there's a couple of references for people if they want to take a look. And uh, that's that's it. So, any questions about that? Are the um, scales pretty accurate? If you, are, to kind so, of if you manage to calibrate it back to kind of a known. Yeah, so that, like, that has, you have to do that. So you do have to. Um, oh, you actually calibrate it after you. Yeah, so what you do is oh, okay. you, um, there's a couple parameters in the, in the library that you use. Um, and one of them is the, is the gain. So what you do is uh, to go back. So if I just go back a few slides. So you can see these two uh, tomato cans here. Uh, and I have another one of these, these uh, kitchen scales that I haven't hacked. So I, I just measured the weight of these two on the, the unhacked kitchen scale. And then I changed the gain accordingly. Um, what I realized though is that you have to use uh, as heavy a weight as possible. So this isn't quite heavy enough. To get the get the best um, best accuracy, so really, if this is a fifteen kilogram scale, you really want to use, you know, twelve or 15, or fourteen kilograms sort of thing, so that you can can make yep. sure that you know your, your gain is as, as accurate as possible. But it's it's good enough. I, I just did it roughly, and it's probably all, only off a couple of grams, so it's probably, it's pretty good right now. Just need to to finalize it. Really, just one of those things to to do. I'm finding um working from home. I think I need a time delay lock on my fridge door. <laughs> well, I can't say this, app, this, this does seem to help. It's sort of um um what you know what they say about what gets measured gets improved sort of thing. Is yeah. I think if you, if you That's good. Pay a little bit of attention, then it's like it make it'll make a big difference. Um, yeah. I so cheated I, once and got the uh, Weight Watchers uh, book, and it lists all the food with the calories next to it. And when I looked at uh, something like sweet and sour chicken with egg fried rice, 
like some people do when they go to the pub, they have a few bevies and then they go and get a, <laughs> a meal afterwards or whatever. It worked out like five and a half to 6,000 calories. Yeah, yeah. That was on top of what they've already had during the day. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, <clears throat> was eye opener, shall we say. Yeah, so but I have tried that in the past. I have sort of like, you know, how much calories is, is this actually? And you sort of, and then it becomes very tiresome very quickly, doesn't it? <laughs> On that um, previous slide, Richard, you've got the, um, the four uh, strain gauges connected yeah. in what looks, um, what looks to my untutored eye like a, a bridge layout. Yeah, it's a Wheatstone bridge, yeah. I'm just hoping someone can explain to me um, how those all add up. I'd have expected two of them to subtract. Uh, that's a good question. I guess I don't know. Like I said, it's one of the things I want to sort of investigate. But it's taking, yeah, so it's taking two different measurements. I guess I don't know how it works. So yeah. Let me try. Um, if if you look at the um, that diagram there, it's it's effectively it's two potential dividers, so um, right. you're you're going to get the same. I mean, if they're all the same resistance, then you'd get say if it was for like five volts going on uh, the top and bottom, then you'd get two and a half volts on each of the outputs, and uh, as the resistance changes, then one voltage will go up and the other one will go down. That's that's kind of how it works. Okay. Yeah, but um, if if I then um, move my object a little bit across the scale, uh, nearer to the corner uh, where SG two is, then I'll be offloading SG three, um, and the positive output goes down, and I'll be onloading SG two. Um, um, and the negative output goes down as well. Yeah, no, I think it's this is it, the um, uh, the Wheatstone bridge is on each of those things. So you got you got one of these things on each corner. So so you've you've effectively got sort of four resistors on each corner. So you've got sixteen altogether. So it's it's not it's not like one resistor is on one corner. Okay, what what you've just described is what I'd expect. Um, it, it threw me to see SG1234 written all on the same one. Okay, thanks for that. Yeah, right. we, we st I mean, I did a, um, an electronics degree and uh, Wheatstone Bridge is, is kind of, uh, um, I mean, that's been around for a long time. Um, and it, it's, a, it's a way of, um, you know, it's a standard sort of stress load, load measuring thing, you know, where, where these resistors um, are all sort of very carefully matched and, and a small change in, in the resistors will, will lead to a, um, you know, a small change in the voltage, but it, it, it's something that, you know, output plus and output minus, um, the, you'd kind of hope they're going to be the same. The, the goal behind the, uh, the wheat stunch is uh, you can't necessarily get precise measurements. So uh, what you do is you build a bridge and when the, res when the measurement in the middle changes, um, even though the resistors on the outside aren't exactly perfect, they tend to balance out. So uh, it's just really a, a good method uh, for you to be able to measure. Because otherwise, if you're just trying to measure current through something, um, that isn't, in the real world, you have all kinds of problems. Uh, take a look at the article. It, 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 like the guys, like you said, it's been around for a long time. Um, uh, but it's just basically, a, it's a really great tool for when I'm having to deal with uh, resistors that don't have to be perfect. Okay. Um, and also it allows you to control the flow of current through the device too, by using the, the bridges. But yeah, cool project. Yeah, so I guess, yeah, what I was hoping to do before next month, before I was going to do actually do this presentation was um, go through and understand the chip a bit better and understand the circuitry a bit better. Sure. Really, I was just trying to trying to accomplish a goal at this point. I just wanted to get it all working. Um, just uh, yeah, so that's that's what I end up with. Any other questions? Question, Richard. Yeah. Oops, oh, sorry. Go on. Sorry, I was going to say I'm going to have to go now. 
Um, thanks, everybody. I'll um, catch you next time. Cheers, Dennis. Okay. Goodbye. Cheers, guys. Thanks for having us. See ya. Um, Richard, what did you use for Tinker to get the um, table view in? How did you control the size of input in that table to make sure the columns were the size that you specifically wanted and to import that? Yeah, this is this is just tree view. Because I've done Tinker, but nothing to that level, like literally, and it's very like columny laid out, isn't it? So that's why I was like, wow, that's a lot of code. Uh, well, not really. So this this is just called this is just a tree view. So yeah. very simple. You just sort of say how big you want the columns and stuff like that. Um, this gray, gray, white, gray, white thing is done with tags. Okay. Uh, I, I can provide my code. It's all I could. It's not a problem. It's not very, not very good code, but you can. You're welcome to it. Yeah. No, I'm very begin beginner with Tinker. That's why I think it's good. Yeah. So I've got full of. Um, it's one of those things when you start out a project, you end up with um, lots of small programs that don't do much until you actually start writing the proper program. So it's right now there's all sorts of junk in the in the repository, but uh, I'll I can clean it up a bit. Yeah, no, I really, really, really like it. Yeah, so I was interested to hear anyone about um, if people are, have any comments on the GUI and stuff like that. So there's always some little things to do with sort of make everything more consistent, things like that. But I don't know if not really a GUI builder. I know it looks kind of old fashioned and stuff, but I think the Raspberry Pi, the Kinter, Thing I was looking at only had a few different um, themes. So yeah, it's a bit limiting. More questions? Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> um,